everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Black Geyser, Couriers of Darkness. It is a classic CRPG in the same vein as Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, games that I grew up with and loved to bits back in the day. And uh, so this is one of those that got uh, kickstarted a couple of years ago. Actually, a, a while back, uh, pulled in a decent amount, and more or less. It's, uh, it came out in early access last year, and now it's going 1.0. And the uh, developers and publisher were kind enough to reach out to me and uh, sponsor a pair of videos for me. So we're going to be checking it out now, and then I'll come back for another video on Friday uh, for more, you know, a little bit further in the game, maybe some other stuff. Uh, so a couple of things to note is that this game will be out on the 17th, which I believe is Thursday, and uh, it's going to be $30 at launch, which I think is more than fair for a CRPG nowadays. So, oh boy, I get to create a character. I could go with a pre-made one, but why would I ever do that? Oh, why didn't I look here first? And more to the point, why must I come fetch you for every little thing? <laughs> I love these options. Uh, what was I supposed to be doing? Who are you? And sure. Uh, let's just go with sure. Grant, Grant Flint Faced is, is my name and uh, not thinking is my game. Why sure. am I not reassured? Listen, the lords from Isselbright are already here and waiting to be served. And for goodness sake, don't forget to gather your things from your chest before you come to table. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about CRPGs and just like bafflingly stupid characters. If you could pull it oh off, it's... Way. Oh my god, that voice is amazing. Where is my chest, though? You've received a quest to complete objectives. Okay, press O. Oh. Side quests, journal, compendium, greed, greed. Oh, right. Okay, if I check map, what do we have? South gate, main gate, me, orb of mesmerizing colors. Let's go see pretty colors. Oh, interesting. Control slows us down. Wait. I don't want to go into fight mode. Let's Hurry talk to Alusia for a second. Please. Bah, can't the world let me be for a few minutes? Don't you have work to do, Grant? All right. The orb reveals a kaleidoscope of swirling colors and vapors, mesmerizing the viewer. I'm going to quick save. Oh, perfect. The hotkeys are just there as normal. Oh, tab to highlight everything. Okay. I was pressing alt. Well, I guess we'll either not find our stuff or we'll find it and it'll be easy. We'll see. Man, loading screens. Not bad, actually. Like, could it could be a lot longer. What was I playing recently that had really long loaded screen? You know, I don't remember. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't know. Where, I don't know where the chest is. However. Everything is a chest if you look hard enough. Is there like a go sneaky button? Nope. Is this my chest? No. I wonder if there's inventory maximums. I certainly hope there are not. Hello. Hello. Hey, Grant. Aren't you supposed to be serving drinks at the meeting? Don't worry about me. Marie will calm down in a while. Wait. I'm just serving drinks? Well. I would be normally if it wasn't for the fact that everything is now mine. What if I... What if I do this here right now? No one cares. All right, I don't even need to be surreptitious about this. I just need to go. Hello, looting everything in the... <laughs> oh, oh, this is Lord Espen's sword. I should probably not touch it. Okay, so I can't loot everything yet. Yes, yes. I'm... I bet when everything goes terribly wrong, that's when I get to loot the whole kit and caboodle. Anyway, don't don't mind me. I'm just a dwarf with incredibly sticky fingers, which is odd because I'm a Highlander. I'm supposed to be hitting stuff, but hitting and looting. There, I mean, they're two sides of the same coin. It's the and the coin is called adventuring. Where is my Where is the chest that I'm supposed to get my things from? I, I'm not clear on that. Ah, I think that was our chest. We found it. Oops. <laughs> 
Wait, why? How'd they end up through the wall? All right, whatever. I just let's try this again. I close and drop. So I guess I can I do like a shift click, alt click, control click. No, I guess I do have to drag it over. I feel like I need pants. Or no, those are pants. Okay. They just look... They really... They really hug the booty. Okay. And... Hand? No, quick slots. Weapons and shields. There we go. If I can... Oh. I see. I'm not clicking and dragging. I'm clicking, then uh, then dragging. Okay. Potion of cure all recipe. Ooh. Potion of healing recipe. Identify. Oh. General consumables. Learnable by Convoker, Spellweaver, Winter Mage, and Necromancer. Unfortunately, I am hit good, so can't do that. Well, here's the question. We have a random we have a random belt. Can I just put it on? I can. And we have a random necklace that I can also just put on. I have another random necklace that I'm Oh wait, no. I guess because this has nothing to uh, serving Gambus in. Why am I rolling into you this heavily so. armed? I thought I thought I'm supposed to be serving drinks. I feel like I've <laughs> I feel like I've missed something. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I didn't question the lady about what I was doing. But it does definitely feel like I'm just going to be walking into this. Uh, Bizarrely heavily armed? Okay. Hello? Talk to the cook. Don't you have somewhere else to be? The lords and ladies are waiting. Is it here? Hello. I'm here. Hello. At last. Ugh, don't go twisting an ankle in all your hurry. You take care of the drinks. Lord Wolcraft and Lady Larenthal prefer wine. Lord Joran would like ale. Lady Virulin and Lord Espen want mead. Go! I... Uh... Er... Do I have to memorize this? Probably not. But you never know with these games. You know, they, they might test you on whether or not you actually... Picked the right choice. I don't know. Uh... Hi. Okay, grab drinks. Okay, so we have... Oh. On the left side of the looting panel, you can see the things. Right side, you can... Huh. Anything else? No. Just pick up all. Alright, so I guess I'm just supposed to be... So, Wolcroft Hello, wanted... Oh, the staff. I, I am was supposed starting to, remember to wonder stuff. if you'd all fallen ill with the plague or something. Well, he wants wine. Hello. You're here. Finally. Lord Espen... ...want mead. Ah, good. Hello. Yes, yes, get on with it. Larenthal prefers wine. I suppose you expect me to toss you a coin for doing your job. Why am I heavily armed? And Hello? Lord... Well? Jorn wants oh, ale. You know this is supposed to be served at room temperature. No, of course you don't. Okay. Who's Lady Espen? Uh, wait, no, we did Lord Espen. Lady Verilyn. Oh, no, we're supposed to serve her too. So she, she Ugh, wants drink. The was quite stuffy, or, and my throat is sorely parched. Wait, no, where's the lady that was yelling at me for not being here on time? She's just not present in the room. Okay, so Lady Verilyn also wants mead. Just what I wanted for a change. I'm still curious about why I'm a very heavily armed waiter. Shall we do business, gentlemen? Gentle ladies? Yes, let's. We are convened to discuss the situation with Daron Gould. What has been rumored and suspected for so long has finally come to pass. A council of nobles with mining interests in the town have declared themselves independent from the crown of Isilmerald. I don't like this dirty business. Sending a list of grievances to the king. Sounds more like the actions of a bunch of uppity peasant farmers than nobility. 
There are ways these things are done. And there are ways that kingdoms may crumble. I understand your feelings on the matter, Lady Larenthal. But Darren Gould enjoys the sympathies of many important persons here in the North, and I number myself among them. What's more, there have already been defections among the Azimeril nobility, most recently Aldenar. She speaks of your son, Lord Espen, who chose to forsake his birthright to join the rebels. Ah, yes. Thank you, Lady Larenthal, for reminding me. And I'll thank you, Lady Virilin, not to speak his name on this estate, nor in my hearing again. Oh, why, I will... <laughs> but you won't. Whatever the loyalties of uh, the young Lord of House Espen, the Southern nobles have many legitimate complaints. Heavy, some say ruinous taxation, delayed shipments thanks to the Crown's regime of inspections and checkpoints, the King's insistence that Daron Gould's military, e even the Town Watch, must be trained in the North. It's quite a list. Yes, it's all very sad. I'm sure they toss and turn the night away on their beds of gold bars. Taxation and bureaucracy are simply the facts of managing a prosperous nation, of keeping our enemies at arm's length. How long would their precious minds keep producing without the king's protection? I see, the reason why I'm heavily armed is so I can <laughs> just bust some kneecaps. Did you know, I heard this rebellion was prompted in part by a belief making the rounds in Deron Gould that the king himself is cursed. <laughs> oh my, what exceptional nonsense. <laughs> Have they been breathing the fumes of their own minds? All right, very amusing. But like Lady Varellen, I am not unsympathetic to our southern friends. Surely some of Isilbright's rules and dictums could be culled, especially if it means avoiding war, a much more costly proposition than losing a handful of coin in taxes. Wise counsel, my friend, but I fear the time for compromise is already past. The message from Daron Gould was deliberately provocative, leaving the king no way to negotiate or save face. The time has come, lords and ladies, for us to commit our forces, and our purses, to our rightful liege, and crush Daron Gould. Or, throw in with the rebels. They have the gold, they have a well-trained army, and most importantly, they control the mines. In a conflict of any significant length, having control of the source of the kingdom's metals means they must only outlast the North rather than outright defeat her. Yuve, what is your opinion on recent developments? You're asking the errand boy? What does- Kindly do not interrupt me while sitting at my table, Lady Larenfall. Well, speak up. <laughs> huh. A peaceful solution must always be best, especially if the only point of contention is money. Whether or not Darren Gould is, has a legitimate grievance is beside the point that must be crushed to do otherwise would invite rebellion from every quarter, and since I have little ex experience in political matters, for me the wisest course is silence. I mean, I feel like the fourth option would be... <laughs> no, I don't know. Like, the... I These games are always always like to hold a mirror to me and sometimes I, it's very easy to go with the like you know always the goody two shoes route like mass effect had such an easy way of doing it it's like hey do you want to just go paragon pick the blue option and so you don't have to think about it here is a little bit more nuance i'm not sure how much it matters though i know there's the whole greed thing um and like part of it is i i don't actually know how legitimate the grievances or are or not because I realistically over taxation and a bunch of these other things very much are just abusing a vassal state and taking away all of their power while forcing them to form the backbone of your economy like that's not a good thing 
And we're already seeing that, you know, a number of these nobles are just very much like, ah, oh, you know, they must be weeping on their bed of gold. But the answer is, if their taxation is so ruinous that they're rebelling, then chances are they got nothing but dirt. I, I don't know. And like I said, it holds a mirror up to me as a person when I'm actually given options that I need to, um, I need to think about. Frankly, you know, it, from what little I heard, it sounds like the rebels actually have kind of a point here of like, you know, we are being abused. I don't know. Let's go with number one for the time being. I'll just be relatively peaceful, and if I have to bust kneecaps later, then that's exactly what I'll do. So a peaceful solution must always be always be best, especially if the only point of contention is money, which is true. Very noble of you. I agree that the value of gold must be held cheap against the value of doing the honorable thing. I was wondering what was happening, and the answer was, it was loading the Armageddon. My ladies, my lords, we are under attack. Please, take shelter at once. Perhaps the cellar. You may wish to arm yourselves, my lords. How much time do we have? Too little, I'm afraid. Their numbers are overwhelming. We were forced to fall back to the main gate, and they're already- Surely they will listen to reason, wherever they're from. They won't kill us out of hand like so many soldiers. They wouldn't dare, right? Calmly, my friends. Let's all go out to meet them. They're not bandits after all. Yes, go ahead. You have my blessing to speak on my behalf if it's of any use. Oh, they're all dead. You? What? Where are you going? Come with me. Make haste. Well, I cer certainly am glad I looted everything. Or no, that's the door. Okay. There we go. You and you lot with me. But what is that, my lord? That the sound. The gate has already been breached. The house of Espen is about to fall to the agents of Daron Gould. Now, never mind that. Just follow. And you. Ready your weapon. With all the time you spent training under my master of arms, you must be able to defend yourself by now. Okay, so I guess I'm the waiter that also does does good bonk. Are we actually fighting anything? Oh yeah, we are. Well, oh, get in there. I don't know what anything does. Weapons, consumables, skills. I don't think I have too much. Force lock, command company. And I do have prolonged berserk. Let's go, Angie. Okay. Well, seems like my best option is to go for the spellcaster if I can. Unfortunately, I can't seem to hit her in the slightest. There we go. Now she's dead. I wonder if I can actually, uh, adjust my AI. I. These are all mine now. Well, there doesn't seem to be a carrying capacity, which is quite nice. It would be dangerous to go there. That's fair. Okay, so where, where am I going? Probably upstairs. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm going for the sword. Stand against me. Well, I definitely, like in most games, it always feels like the melee start is definitely the easiest, where it's just like, hey, what if you were Big Bonkus and can crush all comers? Yes? Good. Well, can I loot them all? Yes. Yes, yes. Here, I'm going to very good. Guard this door with your life, Grant. Oh, guard this door with your life. Grant, come with me. Yes. Yes. I don't have to sacrifice self. I get sweet sword. Now listen to me. Listen closely. This is important. For Lady Espen was the love of my life. My one love. 
there was nothing arranged about our betrothal. And? You were never so lucky as to meet her yourself. But if you had, she... Oh, I see. We're the half... Uh, we're the, the bastard son-ish? Gods damn these Derongold swine. Behind me is my dressing chamber. Go fetch my sword from there. At once. Maybe we're not the bastard child. If we were the wife, I don't know. Well. It definitely does feel like it. Oh, is this the sun? Oh, we're taking the sword so the sun can't have it. Wow. I love this swagger on the walk cycle. Found you at last, father. Didn't figure you would try and hide from your fate. To be betrayed by my own son. Who wouldn't hide from such a terrible end? I've learned a few things, you see. Things your priests and man-at-arms could never teach. I have gained a new perspective. Seen the truth of this world. So, you were not even paid in coin to turn traitor against your own house. Only pretty words. Kill me if you wish. But I promise it will avail you nothing. Every man pays for his sins, my son. And the price of a sin such as this... Well... Enough of your piety! It sickens me. But your last decision, at least, is the correct one. Hold still, father. Oh, do I not have a mustache on my beard? Oh, no, that's just my giant nose. What? Uh, okay, but what about the sword? I should have at least grabbed the sword before I got hood hoodwinked? Warped out of there by the crone? I actually really like these illustrated loading screens. They're nice. I... Uh, is that traditional media? I, up, it looks like a charcoal boy. painting almost. It's or not charcoal. Eh. But what the where am I? What? Does this look like Rothgar's realm to you? You're in my hut. Okay, but why am I in your hut? I brought you here. But no more questions for tonight. There's a cot over there. You should try to get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow will be a very, very long day. Uh, go to bed. All right, but first, loot, loot everything. I have. Out of my way. <laughs> Say I have problems, but I don't. Oh, kitty. Oh, you can't pet the kitty. Also, that is a very thin bed. Holy moly, how do how do bed? Oh, I see. Hit the camp button. Wake up. Lazy. Always sleeping, this one. Must have been raised by dream wraiths. Hey, just because you've clearly never heard of beauty sleep doesn't mean that you need to impugn my work ethic. Oh, I love that line. Well, if you've got any ethics at all, you'll have an old woman around the house and on. Now, how about you make yourself useful and weed the garden? Okay. That's what I'd like to hear. Now, I'll be making stew this evening. You'll be helping. I need you to go find some things for Take us. Take a look at this list. Once you've read it, let me know, please. Yes, yes. Okay. So, bruise root, brown stem mushroom, and slab of fox meat. Feeling I guess I should tell her. Oh, good, good. You know how to read. I have something that will help you gather what we need without hurting yourself too much. Here. Put these on. I now have gloves. Gardening gloves. Well, extra brewing and drawing, sure. Good. You put your gloves on just like the rest of us. All fingers at the same time. I'm feeling judged. You weren't trying to put them on one finger at a time, were you? Good, good. Now off with you. We've got everything on the list. Come back. I'll get to making that stew. By the way, be careful.
careful of the creatures in the forest. They can be a bit bitey. Take this stuff as well. It should come handy should you need to protect yourself. Except for like, why do I need a traveler's cane? Pulse and blow. Well, okay. Morning star, rods and staves. Wait. Oh, we do actually have to worry about weight a little bit. I I am getting closer to overburdened. So it has a little bit of extra range. It oh. So it does attack faster. What else do we have? Keen battle axe. It unfortunately doesn't look like any of the enemies that we fought. Gave me any kind of proper uh There we go. Gave me any kind of proper blunt weapons, warhammers and so. the like. Well, anyway, I guess I guess now we're Witch Errand Boy. Which I'm just confused where this is going. Hello, who are yes. you? Sir, why are you outside? Greetings, fellow traveler. I'm Volandir. Please forgive me if I if I seem confused. I'm just not well now. The Druidic Order sent me to heal this forest. There's an invasive species of spider I'm to cleanse, but they unfortunately have got the better of me. I've been severely bitten, and they are venomous as well. I cannot continue. I considered approaching the cabin, but I was repulsed. The other spiders are destroying the natural balance in this area. I'm too weak to fight them now. Perhaps you could finish the good work on my behalf? Uh... How'd you come to be poisoned? A group of the little demons pounced at me at the same time, dealt me multiple bites. The foreign species venom is more potent than that of other local arachnids. The wounds are not mortal. I thankfully took the antidote in time, but I shall be dizzy and weak for a while yet. All right, cool. Thank you for serving the Green Mother. There are four places in the forest where the infestation is thickest. A colony in the north and south, another bunch near a conspicuous bush, also to the south, and one by the old bridge to the west. Out of my way. <laughs> oh, it's these things. Oh, crush them. Okay, so I just have some quests. Can I just, like, go full aggro on... Oh my god, I exploded it. Alright. We also have these white writhers. Ugh. Those are forest spiders, so we want nothing to do with them. Slay the fox wandering the forest. Come back here, fox. There's no way I can do this normally in real life. Oh, ho, 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 gosh. I was supposed to get fox meat, yes? Well, I have it now. I should probably grab all these things as I go by, just in case. Because apparently there's alchemy in this game. I, oh uh, gosh. I'm, reg I'm regretting my decision to go, uh, to go warrior a little bit. Because I'm, I'm wondering if I actually would have had a better time. Uh, or not better time. Me. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'll probably get a party member that's a spellcaster or something. Yes, yes. But there's always kind of that question of like, well, is the magic system going to be like Primo? And hopefully I just get a, a mage character. I just, I remember playing, it was both Icewind Dale and Baldur's Gate. Like going spellcaster in the beginning of those was always just brutal. Because you only had like a couple of spell casts and not enough resources and like things would just one shot you. And so it was always like wiser to go like go with melee squad up until like level five or six. And then uh, pick up the characters that would have... Um, you know, pick up the, the characters that would have... Do I auto-attack the next target? Yeah, it looks like I do. Perfect. Uh, then pick up the spellcaster characters. With the exception of, like, druids and clerics, because they always tend to be kind of viable across the board. That's something that, uh, like, 5th edition D&D did really well, was suddenly making spellcasters not trash early on, because they had a little bit more HP and could cast a lot more spells. And so I think I've... I need to get over that, that so. baseline assumption that spellcasters are inherently uh, punished just for existing for the first couple levels. There we go. I think that's all of the chores. I mean, one way or another, I think I've just killed everything in the area. Yeah. Let's go talk to Volandir again. Uh, the yellow spiders, are they slain? Yes, your eight-legged nemesis will trouble the force no more. Thanks for your help. I need more time to recuperate, but I believe I'll recover eventually. Take this antidote. I've had more than I need already. Now that the spider's gone, you will make better use of it, I'm sure. 
Uh, eh. I don't need it. That's kind of you. Beyond kind. I'll mention you when I report this great success. Sweet. Oh, we've leveled up. Okay. Uh, so I can increase my bargaining and persuasion, learning and research. Uh, read various text scrolls and recipes. Eh. And brewing. So craft potions and powders from various ingredients collected through Yerengal. Potions can be mostly consumed, uh, mostly be consumed for a set of positive effects or healing. What powders can be thrown or planted on enemies for a set of negative effects or damage? Crafting potions and powders from advanced ingredients at higher level, higher heat levels will require investing some points into this skill. I'm going to keep going for bargaining and per persuasion, namely. And I'm going to keep investing in forcing locks and doors. Seasoned warrior might not be a bad idea. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I want to be able to just bash down doors. Or... No, let's start investing in Season Warrior, because I want one or two... Well, I get four party members, so I'm probably going to want to get somebody that's good at unlocking things, and that doesn't have to be me. And I'm just going to keep investing in War Clubs and Abilities. Enraged and Indomitable to the target, Challenging Howl, or Shattering Shot. But that's a ranged attack. I don't do ranged attacks. Oh, I get a lot of skill points. All right. I wonder if that means I can go past 100%. You know, 200% or, or more. Feel free anyway. to take a rest if you need. Oh, the hero returns, and with a fresh harvest. It's all there. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Now that I've gotten what you need, I have more questions about what's going on here. No, no. Let's get the pot boiling first, and then... Watch this. Did you forget to make these herbs edible, child? Come now, you must dry them to bring out the flavor. Surely you've cooked before. I have to wonder what that Lord Espen even had your tutors teach you at his fancy estate. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, take this candle and get to drying. Okay, so we're learning how to do alchemy. So, drying. Drying ingredients. Uh, let's see, heater devices, start drying. Ingredients are now dried. Your candle has been consumed in the process. Lanterns, on the other hand, can be used indefinitely. They also enable the use of various heat levels. Okay, anyway, start crushing. And collect. Huh. So this is a very involved alchemy system. I like that. Good, good, well and dried. Give me just a moment and... There, it's on the fire. Now we have a few precious moments to spare. We should talk. About talking. Okay, so we can do, you're trying to teach me something, learning and research, or never enough, to, ah, there's never enough time, and our time would be better served by discussing matters of import. Very good, I think you already have the hang of it. But in case that was a fluke, the idea is this. Taking the time and effort to gain knowledge or even learning to talk will benefit you greatly in the difficult times ahead. Pay close attention to what you might uncover in conversations through wit or charm. Thank you. I'm glad you find it to be. Now I'm certain you have more questions. Perhaps I can continue being instructive. Why did you save me from the assault? I kept an eye on Lord Espen. He was a force of balance in Ismerald. His death means the balance has failed. And it so happens that I have a soft spot for young people of potential. You were in the wrong place at the right time. I saw a chance to aid you. Uh, who are you really? I'm afraid that is one question I can't answer for you. It's easiest to say I'm someone you were meant to meet. I'm here to set you on your way towards what you must accomplish. What must I accomplish? Pardon me, I misspoke. There are two questions I cannot answer for you. Is this still almost ready? Or no. Why is it that you're keeping me here and making me do all this? I feel like that's kind of a non-question. You weren't ready for Aldenar's attack on his father's manor, and I don't believe you were ready for the chaos of the world as it was when I pulled you from it. You're here to keep you safe, and to make sure that you're ready for the next calamity you find yourself in. Stu ready? Yes. Now, there's something you should know. When you leave here, the world you knew yesterday will be gone. Go on. The attack on the Espen estate was only the first spark of a consuming fire, I am afraid. Much will be lost to strife 
in war. There are worse things than war, though. There is something you must understand before you leave here. A great and terrible curse has fallen over Isilmerald and much of the rest of Yerengal. It drives men and women to madness. It starves the prince and turns the pauper to a life of desperation. It is the essence of avarice itself. A curse of greed spreads through the land. Greed? What do you mean? A terrible covetousness that hides in mortal hearts. It is among the darkest of dreams. But this is no normal greed, no. There is magic behind it. No mere apprentice's catrip either. It is most dangerous. And you must understand that. Ah, the stew is done now. Just let it cool. Ah, getting a good look at you. Now, you're a bit of a fighter, aren't you? Born and trained. Ah, you have the rippling muscles and cock surety. Wow, that's a... Sure, why not? The real test of a warrior isn't confidence or muscle. To stay alive long enough to become a veteran, you need a brain. Now see that chest over there in the corner? It's locked, and you don't look like the kind of boy who spent a lot of time fiddling with mechanics. Go open it for me. Uh, this one? Probably. Container locked. All right. Aha, don't worry, child. There is treasure inside, but we'll have to get past the beastie to get to it. Now, I'll be joining you for a short while to make sure you don't stab yourself anywhere that won't grow back. If you want to learn to inspire your allies to follow your orders, it's important that you practice. Tell me what you want me to do as we fight. Oh. Okay, character can become the leader of your party by using the command company skill. What? Okay, select a commander. Okay, once your commander is set, you can choose, close the commander panel by right-clicking the command company button. To apply the commander perk you selected, the party needs to rest together. Click the rest button to final your... Okay, so what, what do these do? So hit and run. Attack and movement speed of all party members increased by 30% for three turns at the beginning of combat. Block chance goes up by 15%. Aim and accuracy of all party members goes up during the night. Dodge chance, parry chance, and block chance goes up by 3% for all party members. Havoc. Physical damage dealt by 15%. Dodge and parry chance decreased by 5%. And wolf pack. Attacks made against the current target of the commander deal extra damage. Okay. I actually, I like these. Um, I might as well go for... Havoc. <laughs> and drink some water, too. Okay. Now are we fighting... <laughs> are we fighting the Rither? We were fighting the Rither. Well, that was easy. Very good. You're learning your way around a fight. Remember that you often won't be alone in the battlefield. Now that was... Now what was it? We... Ah, yes. Aha, we've done it. This stew is cooked and cooled. Here, boy, this will warm you up after a long, long day. I see, I that, see that look in your eye again. No, no more questions for today. Eat your stew and get some rest. Didn't I just rest? What do you need, my child? But stew, but also chest? Chest. Chest has light leather armor, which I already have, but I will grab anyway. I guess we just rest again. Good morning. I fear that our time together is nearing an end. Thank you. No, no, it's no great thing. I need to be certain you're ready to face the world. So does that mean I'm ready? Oh, yes, yes. As ready as one can be. What's going on in the world that I need to be ready for? Oh, conflict is to be expected everywhere you go. Great things are coming. More, I cannot say. No, no. Is that all? Yes, yes that that's is the gist, the gist of, it. of it. Oh, damn it. Things were put in motion all over Yerengel since I plucked you from your father's house. Yup. I kind of figured. Yeah, so the guy's first wife was not an arranged marriage. We're the secret love child from that marriage, but he probably went into a political marriage to somebody else uh, after his first wife's death, uh, leading to Arnvald. Was his name Arnvald? I don't know. Anyway, you telling me that? 
Lord Espen was your father, yes. I do have trouble with the partially voice act, uh, like partial voice acting here. I might actually just turn it off. Namely just because if you notice, uh, there will be points where there's no voice acting and then I, I just like roll into voice acting the next line and then they start talking and it always trips me up. So I might just, uh, I don't know, I might turn it off. I do like it though. Like the voice acting definitely has that B grade charm. Where, you know, sure, none of these are the, like, big high-end voice actors of any variety. But at the same time, a lot of them sound really good. Like, she's great. Uh, our, 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 our evil half-brother was great. And one or two of the nobles were pretty good, too. Anyway. But I'm not even human. He couldn't be my father. Pardon, child. I don't wish to explain to you how babies are made. I trust you know. But your mother was indeed not a human. The deities of Yerengal were your mother's midwives. They had a purpose in mind for you, and they had to secure your safety so you could live up to that purpose. You were born into a treacherous world, my dear. It was very important that you not be recognized as Espen's heir before the time was right. Heir. Heir. Ha. Huh. As the gods peered through the veils of the world, they saw that a dwarven child would be stout, strong, and resilient, fit to prosper in an age of turmoil. That's why you were formed so perfectly in the image of your mother. As well... The closely guarded secret of your mother's connection to Lord Espen ensured your safety until now. We haven't the time to go into the story in greater detail, but you are the true heir of Lord Espen. Knowing this should be enough. Now you understand why Lord Espen paid you so much attention despite your servitude. The other servants surely did not receive the same education or the same favors. Nor did anyone else in his house excepting your half-brother, Aldenar. Right, that's what it was. Ah, oh, gods, he killed her father. He did, and that is the world I must send you back to. One where the sole heir of Lord Espen committed patricide, one unaware, yet hostile to your existence. Thank you again for the sage advice. Now you must go and face the world, Grant. I have enjoyed our time together. You will find the path clear. Be safe, my child. Like I said. Yes, I know. yes. Oh, oh no, I'm being catlocked. <laughs> Alright, well, we're done with uh, chapter one. Time to actually get into the game here. Um, oh, my way. Yeah, like what he said. Spider colony, spider. Uh, conspicuous bush. What is. Did I check the conspicuous bush? I must check it again, just in case. World greed grew by 50%. Well, that's interesting. So, I guess one of the, the main plot points of all of this is. Uh, you know, greed. It, so instead of just your standard good and evil, uh, oh gosh, I should, I should find that page again. Is a character? No. Is a journal. Greed. Here you go. So personal qualities and then greed in the world. Global greed faints. The curse of greed currently affects the world of Yerengal faintly. It can barely be felt, but those with a keen sense might start to feel its effect. Costs of living are on the rise throughout Yerengal, albeit ever so slightly. Some can feel the winds of change. So, personal qualities, I am, uh, uh, so my greed is in the negatives, I guess? Party greed negative two. Greed of the act, the higher the world greed will become. Same thing with vilified. And then fame. So the question yes, is... Yes. How good is this game tracking how greedy I am? Because that's that's a legitimate question I, I wish to know a little bit. Travel exit, spider colonies. I didn't actually check out here, so there's, I guess, a little bit more. I was not being the most thorough. But I'm mostly thinking from the perspective of... Oh, what the hell is this? A ghoul? Oh, crush him! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got grunted hard. Damn! Uh, okay, sure. So I only did eight to him. Oh, 21 pulse and blow and then a little bit of, uh, slashing. I got it. I was like, or no, eight stabbing. It's because our mace has spikes on it. You know, I like that combined damage system. It reminds me of, you know, back, uh, I... I don't think it matters actually in in modern D and D, but back in the day, it, it very much was Say like, so. "Hey, using uh, no, I guess it's still there." But I, I I definitely remember like trying to fight skeletons without a club was a giant pain. 
Uh, but, 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 but anyway, I was going to say with the whole greed system, you know, obviously you, you do have your basic morality slider of like virtuous or vilified and whatever. But the greed slider is kind of a neat, uh, a neat alternative to, you know, the standard good, evil, and neutral and lawful or chaotic and lawful. Uh, that I'm used to for most most RPG systems. Uh, I have a lot of conversations with Shell about this where we talk about, I mean, honestly, just kind of the nature of the world and the idea of like, hey, greed is actually like a huge source of a lot of our problems. And so a, uh, a CRPG that actively uh, acknowledges, not only acknowledges that, but but focuses on it more so is actually really cool to me. Wow, this is a really pretty map. Uh, Kingdom of Ismerald. I mean, I guess we're going to the Merchant's Road. I don't think there's anywhere else I can go. I'm curious how, like, open this game is. Because I know a number of CRPGs really do just let you go. You know, the main story generally follows the path. But if you want to just end up in the wrong place way early, you kind of can. Like, I, I was thinking about this recently about how old school CRPGs really were kind of the original limited open world game. And it felt really good. And I'd like to see more CRPGs. I need to play some more CRPGs. I don't think I'm going to be doing series on any of them, but I'd love to play through them and do some reviews. Like, even this one uh, might end up kind of in that same vein. This is why I like being warrior early on. I can just clobber my way through most stuff. Uh, whereas I feel like if I was a wizard, I'd be in trouble. Maybe. Okay. We do also have active, bo uh, active pausing that I can do whenever, which is quite nice. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run around being a weird druid for a while, just grabbing things off the ground. We also have wolves. I am here to fight. Which makes me wonder if there was actually a druid path under the spellcaster class like I don't know if how the class system works in this game. Like if there's unique classes that you can pick up as you go along. Hello, what are you? It's a kobold. Not for long. Holy shit. I'm taking a little bit of damage here, but I seem to also be uh, exploding every kobold that I even take a swing at, which is nothing short of amazing. <laughs> my my yes, foes yes. will explode before my might. Oh, did I not actually manage to loot them all? No, I did. I guess the bags are just still there. I do appreciate that it has a looting though. I'm hoping, I'm hoping over the course of the year to actually sit down and play through some uh, some games kind of on the, on my own. Probably not as full series on YouTube, just because I think everybody you cannot stand against me. or everybody the platform has moved away from let's plays, but that gives me an opportunity to mess around with some other things, do reviews or like kind of weird things. Hello. Somebody got messed up here. But first, Bush. Oh, wow, they really did get messed up. Holy. Well, there's Helgenhar. I got... Okay, I'm... Oh, I'm encumbered from carrying too much. If you say so. You know what? It's worth it. Here's the question. Chainmail Hauberk. Yup. And heavier boots. I'm a big fighty. Let's talk to this I'm guy. Listening. New party member? A sorry sight it is. <laughs> Do you know why they were fighting? Is that a serious question? Even a league beneath the Skag Mountains. Everyone knows of the war. I see some of the livery, livery of Islebright. And their foes are also in uniform. And therefore not bandits or fu fugitives. You're a man of war then. And lucky to wear no such li livery yourself. Anyway, this was one of the smaller battles between a sealed bright and dead and gold. Well, since we're on the same road, why don't we walk it together? I was thinking the same thing myself, but by uh, but by both habit and predilection, I'm always careful of my companions. Tell me what brings you out in this des desolate road alone. Uh. Um, sure, let's just tell him our story, and if that's a problem, then we fight him. Well, that's quite a tale. If I was a bard, I'd be taking notes right now. 
It stands to reason that with your father dead, you are the heir to his estate. Now, I'm not quite sure what I should do about the estate. You need to call, uh, claim it yourself. No one's going to walk up and hand it to you. Well, if there is somewhere all my questions could be resolved. This is the road to Asilbright, you know. Capital of Asilmarilt, and also the world capital of noble titles. The city's Hall of Records boasts the largest collection of histories in Yerengal. I myself am planning to visit to research some family matters. Be wise to do the same. Uh Well, seems like a good place as any to go. Care to join me? Excellent. Onwards to a Silbright. Oh, he's got a good voice. Thirsty okay, now here's the question. So, separate inventories, no party inv inventories. So, I have to figure out I'm listening. Yep. What? Well, can I just hand him things? We're just going to march right in and just unload an army's worth of equipment. But we will be wealthy by the end of it, may maybe, or not. You never know. Okay, do we think that's enough? Go ahead. Where's yeah. The wheel? Yes, that's sir. about as split as I can get. What? There's a little bit more. And I might as well just kind of search I'm this going. whole area. Oh, and he's... Of he can mate. level up. Okay, general skills, bargaining, persuasion, brewing, and drawing. So unfortunately, kind of the same deal across the board. I'm going to have him start going into alchemy. Okay, class skills, seasoned warrior, command company, force locks, and doors. Um, well, considering I'm... Oh, I should probably go command company, maybe. Yeah, let's just give him seasoned warrior as well. And he is battle axes. Okay. Uh, yes. There we yes. go. Oh, has he leveled up again? Say? Oh, dialogue. Uh. What's life like in Stoneholm? Okay, so we could we could talk to him more. Well, if you say so. I appreciate that it tells you that there's more dialogue options. I I wouldn't mind getting to know the party members further. However. Uh, to some degree, I'm, I'm, I want to see more of the, the game than the lore at the moment. I guess it's kind of, they go hand in hand. These games are not exactly purely driven by gameplay, but there's always kind of the question of like, okay, uh, you know, what is, what is the, where are all the cool things? Is there, uh, how do I even describe it? Like, I don't know. What do, what do I want to see out of a CRPG? And the answer is always just like, Lots of interesting places to explore. Weird locales and honestly fun dungeons. Fungeons are like kind of my big big deal in CRPGs. I always loved going deeper into them. Um The dialogue and stuff I appreciate, but I think I'm usually overwhelmed by the amount. Out of my way. Which you know, now that I'm thinking about it, one of the big selling points of this game is that they have like 300,000, was it lines or other stuff uh, for like how how deep this game is? I can even check. Uh, yeah, over three 300,000 words of handcrafted narrative. Okay, so that's a little less. 300,000 words is, you know, doable. That's multiple novels, but uh, not like, li oh my god, lines would be absurd. Let's see. Oh, I should probably also loot this. Not that the wolves really have too much, but you never know. I might be able to do something with it. I could also fight the wigglers, but I don't actually know if they're worth fighting. There we go. Ooh. Hello. Hello. Good day, sir. On your way to Isilbright, I warned. Ah, wise choice given the circumstances. It's been several days since I fled Darren Gould. I was already doubtful of our chances against Isilbright before the War Council decided to make its move. When the plague struck, I grew certain I was on the wrong side. What plague? How can you not have heard? Have you been living at the bottom of the sea? Darren Gould declared war on Isselbright a few days back and has already gained quite a foothold in the south of the kingdom. Militarily, it was quite the feat. But a terrible illness began to rage across the city almost immediately thereafter. Citizens have been taking their taken to their beds for several weeks before, but no one thought it was serious. Now they've begun taking to their graves and in the dozens. I took it as a sign to leave town, but don't you go calling me a coward. Merchant has no true home anyway. That's how I look at it, and you know, I managed to bring some of my wares with me from Darren Gould. Care to take a look? 
You seem to know your way around. Do you know anything about the raid by Darren Gould on the Espen estate? This happened a few days back. Yes, I heard about something like that, but I was preparing to leave Darren Gould at the time and didn't pay much heed. If you're interested, you should try your luck in Isselbright just ahead. In fact, it's probably the best place in Yarengal to find out what you're looking for. Have you heard of the Hall of Records and houses the greatest collection of written history? Okay, yeah, we already know all this. What do you have to offer? Goods for travelers, mostly. I used to deal in weapons, too, but that stock I was able to move quickly back in Darren Gould when the war was declared. But not to worry, I intend to put feelers, uh, put out feelers in Isselbright and rebuild my business post-haste. Okay, so what does he have? Mainly. What do I have that I can just... Wait, no, no, no. All. I see. Okay, here we go. Okay, you're browsing their inventory. You can see their stock on the left side of the screen. Characters on the right. Switch between character inventories using the drop down on the right. Well, I guess we might as well go to Helgenhar. Select all common. Because, yeah, I can just sell all of those. Oh, but he does have a limited amount of money. So that's rough. Uh, let's sell armor then. Uh. If I can? Okay, so it looks like it can sell stuff. It's just not letting me sell anything. Yeah, it's just not letting me sell any of the, uh... The equipment that Helgenhar has. Let's get rid of the bows. The lunar pendant do. Oh! Chance to grant Lucky to self. Good to know. I think he had just has unlimited funds. Is there... Okay, I can just sort it to weapons and armor. Okay, so the claymore... The arming swords. Let's see, travelers. Cane. Uh, do we get rid of the stones? Okay. Inventories are now considerably... Let's just do sort by name. There we go. Inventories are now considerably lighter. Something perfect, want, perfect. Right. Uh, I go. Let's not hot swap between them quick. And it looks like it's time to go to Isselbright. Merchant's Route? Nope. Just going to the gates. You've been attacked on the road to Isselbright Gates. Defend yourself. Oh, that is like the classic CRPG thing. I'm looking at this. I'm I'm wondering if these are digital. It looks kind of digital-ish. Yeah. Yeah, it's digital over a paper texture. It it looks great. I don't know. I as an oh, I'm attacked on the road by spiders. Oh, Get him smacking crew. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. None of this weak hit enemy and they die. No, 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 no. Oh, I want... Okay, how... Remaining turns, four. Eh. The wheel. Yes, Not a problem. What? <laughs> that voice actor yes, is great. Yes. Back to the gates. I Oh, I should have checked them for loot. Whatever, they're just spiders. I think I was just kind of on autopilot. Spells from natural class can generate eggs that will soon hatch. These can be used to distract enemies. The shells will sustain moderate damage before breaking. Oh. I feel like maybe I should have looked into some druid magic. Especially since we know we get a dwarven warrior companion. Well, it's a little too little, a little too late. But maybe if I play through this again, I'll roll druid. Out of my way! Yes? I cannot wait to visit Market Street. You can buy anything you desire there. Fair. Let's just not talk to anybody. Except for maybe the beggar. Please. Yep. Please. Please, sir. I'm so hungry. Don't you have anything to spare? Some breadcrumbs? Yeah, gold. Does that... Does that actually change my character's greed? Like that's, that's a question to double check real quick. Greedy. No, doesn't seem like that affected anything. How great would it be if you could just, like, manually adjust your greed counter just by uh, talking to that man and just making him wealthy? 
Stand, stand to you there. What's your business in the capital? Not a merchant by the look of it. My name is Grant F Flintfist. I'm the heir to the estate of Lord Espen, and I've come to claim my birthright. Eh, I'm looking for work as a mercenary. Is that so? Strong arm is always welcome here, as long as you're fighting for the right side. What are your feelings about the Darren Gould Rebellion? I will strangle them to death with their own innards. Or I witness them kill my father with my very own eyes. That's a that's pretty convincing. Good enough. Go on in. Sweet. Yes, yes. I mean, it's true. It's it's a good hook as any. Your father was killed by the rebels. Hi, we doubt your we doubt your sincerity. They killed my father. They must die. I mean, strangling them with their innards also isn't bad, but I feel like that gives off the wrong impression. It gives off the impression that I'm an unstable being. Which, I mean, I'm really curious if there's some CRPGs that go really off the wall if you just are a nonsense person. Uh, I'll have to look into it someday, because I think it would be really fun to have one that just goes pure chaos, depending on what you do. Uh, meh. Brilliant sleight of hand, Horamil. I reckon Lord Markham still doesn't know he's lighter by the weight of one fancy bracelet. And that, my friends, is why we love the southern shore. Drunken nobles all day long. Only a few more taps like that one, and we can get some proper treatment for Crag. So, someone's coming, I think. What a propitious moment for you to walk into our lives, winsome stranger. My friends and I are collecting a small fee from anyone entering the city. A pittance, really. 50 gold pieces. Huh. So we have a bunch of ones here. You mentioned Southern Shore. What's so great about it? We're not tour guides, sir. We're here to collect the entrance fee. So 50 gold is all we require. So we have a bunch of options here. Did I see... Uh, hear you saying your friend is ill. Perhaps this potion of cure-all would help. But they're shaking people down. What are the guards doing? Uh, I'm I'm torn. Because I honestly kind of want to go with number five just because. This looks exactly like a shakedown and I don't stand for shakedowns. Brave. Stupid, but brave. Smash time. What? No, crush them. Guards just don't care. Well, alright. I, I thought for a second there was the potential that we just subdue them. And then we exploded them into giblets. Out of my way. Well, we've got yeah. the bracelet. Watch your tone around nobles, I warn you. I Did you not just notice some guys tried to shake? You know what? Whatever, I don't give a damn. It looks like I can just loot all of these things and nobody will stop me. Which is kind of wild and a little concerning. Oh, what is this? Tollbard! Oops. Yeah. Oh, adventure, I'm Tollbard. I'm Grant. So it'll be then. Can I see your wares? I... I like this man. Straight to the point and no extra effort. Defender of the Dreaming Timber. So, Axe, what's his bane? Oh! On hit, chance to entangle. Or a Dwarven Warhammer. Which is... Not... Really better. It attacks slower. And it'll yeah, no, that's that that's actually pretty bad. Uh let's see what else is there. There's a lot. Let's take a look at pure weapons first. Or here, let's go down the list. Is there anything else? Brass cauldron and a lantern. Uh let's see, so that'll let us get into better alchemy if we want to. Chain skull cap. I'm assuming all of these just gives us more resistances to various things. It's probably worth it. Plate gauntlets, metal coif. I mean, pretty good if I want to go full tank, man. Plate armor is oof. Oh, wait, where did I get the commoner's gambesons? I guess I must have just had them on me and didn't notice. So first and foremost, I think I want to check to see if there's any better weapons. So, slower? No, that's bad. Let's see, is there a way I can sort by, sort by price? There we go. So, Howl of the Wolf Mother. Summon wolf once per day. 
Uh, it is a Warhammer. It's kind of expensive. What's its damage? Pulse and Blow plus 3. Cold damage, 2.5. Uh, we lose the stabbing, and I do attack slower, but it has a higher status and critical chance. It's not bad. What else do we have? Halberd. Which I'm not doing halberds for this run. Season Oh, Season Warrior plus 10%, some more crit. And then there's just the Warhammer. I don't I think I might just skip these. Let's um I don't know, do we just grab the plate gauntlets and the infantry barbute? Let's see. So that's Grant. What does Helgenhar have? He doesn't have anything either. We're just going to make both of my boyos just nice and tanky. Okay. And I'm pretty sure Grant does not have a helmet. Okay. And I have just enough money that we can... So, which is better? Hel uh, full plate. Stabbing 40s. Uh, slashing 40, stabbing 30, pulse and blow 30. Let's see. Honestly, just all in. We were just here. Oh, you know what? I know where we got the, the gambesons from. From the dudes that we just killed outside. <laughs> I forgot about that part. I guess let's sell all of their gloves and other things. Okay. Now, the one problem with this whole full plate business is I'm probably going to be... Wait. Oh, Highlander can't use heavy armor. I'm listening. Well. Now, is this considered heavy? I have no what? idea. And what is the feature of these? That does give me some extra alchemy. So I'm going to hold on to that real Go quick. Ahead. But we might as well be a pair of tanked, tank, super tanked up dwarves. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Putting on the helmet makes the beard disappear. Is that worth the extra? No, it's not. What? Okay. So let's just sell these back. Anything else? All right, no, that's skills. Oh, right. Yes, right, it's yes. fine. <clears throat> that's enough buying and selling for one day. Alright, oh boy, there's all sorts of stuff. Gavin the Good, Temple of Anarius, Royal Steed, Small Home, Bright Guard Headquarters. Let's go check that first. Oh, and maybe the Small way. Home, just because. Lord Markham, Family House, Family House, Morin's Warehouse, Bellum's Wares, Squalid Homes, other stuff. I'm glad it's all marked and I don't have to just investigate it. Can I help you? Uh... Which way to the market? Oh. He does not like me being in his house. Alright, whatever. Let's check this place. Oh, Bright Guard Headquarters. Yes, I can't go in. Unless they don't let me. At which point, I don't know. Hello? Do we have anybody in here that I can maybe get side quests from? I know the whole, like, oh, exclamation mark way. thing is a little generic, but at the same time, I really do like, uh, just when games are like, hey, by the way, there's something important over here. Can I just loot all of this stuff? I can, but oh my god, that is not worth it. Ratings. Move along. Well, fair enough. Container is locked. That's fair. Good day. Oh, well, they're telling me to watch my tone. Then we've got some prisoners. Eh. Out of my way. Well, I mean, this seems to be working. Okay, so we cannot we cannot go in. Now, we could potentially fight our way in, which, like, I, I'm really curious with one of these CRPGs. What happens if you're, way. like, full aggro? No survivors. Probably terrible things. Uh, maybe? Okay. Church dormitory. Well, here's a question. Oh, you know what? I bet we have to go to South Shore to actually find the dude. Uh, let's see. So we want to find... Well, that's the general store. Fabrics, curio, family house, great baths. 
I guess let's go up here real quick. Oh, let's see. So main quests, findings and beginnings, finding paths. Oh. So actually, Markham is part of the, the main story. That makes sense. Alright, let's just try what? and talk to a guard, maybe. Nope. Well, this looks interesting. I see some named characters. Taking her so long, surely the great Bajala... Bjala? Must have better things to do than skulk around a tavern. You know the nobles in there must be fawning all over her. Wouldn't you take your time if you were in her slippers? Please. Bjala is nothing but an upstart student with an unusually large portion of luck. Anyway, noble blood doesn't automatically grant a noble person taste. That any taste at all, they'd be slobbering over a real prize out, uh, the real prize out here on the... I will steal your tongue, will you? Or I'll cast chattering. Sorry. I'm still baffled that Lord Tripe could fall for that tramp. Tripe? Or... Tripe perhaps, but Lord Fiffin? Unbelievable. What? Can I help you? Sorry if I'm preoccupied. Those two birds are so fickle. I can't figure out what... I must do to make them notice me. Yes. What in Rothgar's hells do you want? I don't know you. Uh, who is this y Lady Biala you're all chatting about? Why is everyone so obsessed with her? I cannot bear it. There's no hope when even strangers from the hinterlands are asking after her. Biala's a wizard who got famous for getting kicked out of Warden Haft Academy. Supposedly, supposedly she was more talented even than her teachers, but her unruly nature was too much, so they threw her out. Then she found that stupid diadem, and madness has ruled ever since. Everyone thinks she's some kind of magical demigoddess. People seem to seem to get recognized these days for the most ludicrous of things. There's nothing about her that's superior to any other student of Wardenhaft. This whole bizarre mystique surrounding her just rose up out of nothing. Uh, where is she now? She's right inside the crooked, crooked haggler there. Whoa! Go in and join the swarm if that's your thing. What is this? What is it? Patrol Golem? Holy shit, that's a big chunker. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Anyway, uh, sure. If we've got named characters talking about a thing, we might as well go in. Oh, what? but I must gather my party before venturing forth. She's probably a party member, is my assumption. Out of my way. If I were to ask, I would compare. Uh, if any were to ask, I would compare Lady Biala's exquisite presence to the light of dawn. Oh, I would never compare Lady Biala's lovely village, vi village, visage, to anything so harsh as that. I think the reflection of moonlight on a still, still pond is more apt. My lords are too kind, but you know, I'm finding it a titch stuffy in here. I believe I will step out for some air. Let me fan you, my lady. I, too, carry a fan for such occasions. Mine is fashioned from pheasants. Pah! Dirty wild creatures are pheasants. My fan is fashioned from peacock feathers. Step aside, poppers. My fan is crafted from the feathers of the legendary phoenix. In summer, it cools thee, and in winter, warms. Really, my lords, I have a needlepoint back at my apartments that I'm most eager to complete. If you'll excuse me. Nonsense, Lady Piala. I can't go another hour without you choosing me over these two scoundrels. I cannot wait another minute until you select me over these two vagabonds. A second, me, a second, me, nincompoops. What spectacle these men make of themselves. A dwarf woman would know how to handle such a situation. A gentle rap on the temple with the backside of an axe. Let's see if we can help her out, Grant. Hello, we are here yes, to yes. smack fools. Yes. Oh, Lord Smedric, as much as your poetry is alarmingly metaphorical, I still must insist that you speak to no one regarding your thoughts on my resemblance to a flower bud ready to open. Okay. Lady, my lords, I hate to interrupt, but I have urgent news. The king is about to make an announcement at the palace. Something about a new tax to be leveled on the nobility in support of the war effort. If you hurry, there's still time to hear him speak. You're not serious. I mean, down with the Darren Gould. I have to go. As do I. As do I. They just that weird stiff swagger is amazing. That was done. Who do I have to thank for my rescue? I'm Grant Flintfist. Glad to be of service. I <laughs> don't think of it a rescue, for I too have metaphors with which to serenade you. Uh, you know what? I'm doing it. 
I see. Well, mysterious stranger, I'm Lady Biala of the Feldegug, darling of the court and spellweaver extraordinaire. But, of course, you know all of that. Uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ, number four. Oh, sweet is la Milady Biala, of course. Her haunches is strong as a wheat farmer's horse. Cripes. <laughs> Let's not do that. I I wish there was another one. I'm not strong enough to carry the ledger I would need to keep track of every self-important noble in Isselbright. You honestly don't know me. How delightful. I'm so tired of the endless legions of fawning earls and viscounts, or viscounts, and hangers-on. One can hardly walk down the street here without tripping over them. And if you don't know me, you must be new to Isselbright. Doubly delightful. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you. What brings you to the capital? Uh... The usual disown, uh, disown nobleman born out of wedlock trying to claim, reclaim his birthright after watching his father cut down. You know the story. Oh, what luck. The disposition of noble titles is practically a second career of mine. You must allow me to accompany you. I will make sure you find what you wish to know and thereby, thereby repay the good turn you've done me by disposing of these well-bred parasites. Splendid. I do need the help. Good. I suggest we try the palace first, or the Hall of Records. Where are those what? things? Oh! If you say so. I guess we have some more things that we can do. Drunkard. Her. Now she's yes. a spellcaster proper. Snow, Summon Spider, Fever, and Stonewall. Well, those will be fun to play with. Okay, what else do we have? You know what? Let's talk to Carmina. Yes. Anybody with a name is probably worth talking to. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? Crooked Hagler. Cool. Bye. And then there's stuff in the back room that... Can, can I really do this? Will no one stop me? Let's pull him out. Grant. No one cares. Where's this is amazing. I'm going? At some point we're going to find somebody that cares. And that's also going to be amazing. But in the meantime, everything is mine, apparently. Okay, so let's actually just keep wandering around for a little while, while longer. Because I bet there might be some goodies. Namely, more party members. We're already up to three. That's good. Can I recruit the cat? Is there a CRPG out there where just you can randomly recruit some odd things? I'm trying to think of it. Because it would be great if you could just recruit, like, somebody's frog. Okay, I found the southern southern shore. It's an inn. It, oh, hi. And also a cutscene. Hey, look, something is going on. What? Thank you for stopping this miscreant. Thank you. Alnarius, there are still a few honest citizens to be found in Isilbride. Hope you're okay. Ah, uh, hope there's a good reason why you're chasing this fellow down a crowded street. Someone might have broken his neck. Yes, the best of reasons, my good for sir. Property and law, the two pillars of our civilization which this elf has chosen to piss on. You don't... <laughs> you can't... How dare you, sir? Do you dare imply that I am a thief? No, sir, I don't imply anything. I say outright that you are a thief. I say you came into my shop, the fruit of my several decades as a goldsmith, and filched my property from a display case... I had briefly unlocked for the benefit of Lady Gildsby. And I say that a man should stick to beer or watered wine during the day and leave the hard liquor or whiskey until evening, but we plainly disagree about that as well. Enough. Give him a hard shake, lads. That piece should pay for both your wages for a month. I want that ring. Well, I think we found our thief. Uh, nothing. Check him again. Did you check his boots behind his collar? Check the lining of his sleeves. His kind of have, have a thousand tricks. Nope, nothing. He ain't got it, Mr. Moron. Uh, let's see. 
If you ever get tired of hawking jewelry, you and your goons should try your hand at street performing. This is the best show I've seen in weeks. Ha! <laughs> Unbelievable. Come on, you two. I've already wasted half a day on this fool. So, new party member. This is why I love the big city. Excitement. Thrills. Always meeting new people. Speaking of which, nice to meet you. Call me Hamlin, please. So, did you actually lift the ring from the man's shop? You mean this shiny trinket? And sleep this night, night grumbling about the injustices of Ilso Bright, and you'll have forgotten about, all about it. So you are a thief. I a thief, hardly. Old Moran and I simply had a misunderstanding about a debt he did not wish to pay. Did you notice how during that entire exchange he never shouted for the watch? Oh, I must congratulate you. Well played, Hamlin. Thank you, sir. You know, I believe you and I have something in common. We both have the aura of adventure about us. We're gentle people of the road, you and I. Destined for greater things than farming or learning a trade. I'd say we throw in together. Sure. Fantastic. Fantastic. Let's Let us carry on, then. Party member. Hmm? And now, right? Yes, you know, this small I'm listening. What? I'm Holy shit, ready. she is tall. What is your wish? What do you wish of me? And weirdly gray. Okay, uh, let's see. A beer would be nice. Now, if I check Thank his you. skills, so brewing and drying. Oh right, stats we know about that. Class skills. So he's got steel and plant I items. Interesting. Picking locks, hiding and sneaking, shading dealings, and disarm traps. Ah, uh, let's see, he only gets two of these. Well, I need a lock pick, so we'll go with that. And I'm gonna probably leave him with bows. He also gets a spell, apparently, or a special ability. So what can he do? Slayer's intent, quicken, steady target, dirty blow, makes the user prepare a dirty attack against their target, aim aiming to disrupt their next ability. 50% chance to cause a stu status effect. What's the next one? For the eyes. So effectively, uh, a crit move. Next backstab attack also inflicts concussion. Next non inflicts blinded. That's not bad. Or potent attack, 30% increased damage. I mean, I might as well go for for the eyes. Because it seems like that's probably his best. We'll find a did I finish her? I did. And she's our research person. Okay. So we've got a Where's we've got a full compliment for the time a... being. What? I'm ready. And he hasn't leveled up. Oh no, he has leveled up further. Yeah, I'll just I'm always keep ready. Keep making him bow related. She's <sighs> all good. Okay, cool. So we're going to head to the southern shore. Because uh, the southern shore is supposedly where they stole uh, Lord Markham's bracelet. We might as well find that and deliver it and see what we get. I'm assuming these are just bouncers. Bouncers. In we go. Please, I intended to pay you with a bracelet. Just as I said, I had a moment ago. Well, I obviously didn't intend to cheat you, Lord Durbat. The facts seem to belie your claims, Lord Markham, it appears to me that you went all in on a bluff, and now that you've lost the round, you're crying out of pocket. I've long envied that bracelet of yours as the reason I accepted your wager. You know that bright guard, you know the bright guard stay clear of this water, quarter. You'd best find a way to settle your debt in soon, unless you'd rather make your excuses to my friend Bafflo Dak. Huh, this is quite the predicament. It seems we're both going to be staying in the southern shore for good, for a good long time. Yes. Well, what do you want, unless you've appeared to either return my mysteriously mislaid bracelet? I have no desire to talk. I have enough of my own troubles to keep me busy. I believe this is your bracelet, yes? You may have it back, if it is. Thank you dearly, my friend. You've done me a great favor today. Excuse me for a moment while I resolve this misunderstanding with Lord Durbat. Here you are, Durbat. May it bring you much joy. Ah, excellent. It's always a pleasure gaming with you, Lord Markham. Especially when I win. Good day. <sighs> I have a copper chit on my person right now, but please come find me later at the Embassy of Zeta Suda. You'll find it in the castle district. I'll have a reward for you then. 
Well, that was quick enough. Anybody else? No. Except for maybe Forbrum, the bartender? Can I, I don't know. Sometimes you? bartenders have useful things to say. Most of the time, eh. Nope. We should probably rent a room at some point. We're not overwhelmingly injured, but, you know, at some point it'll be a good idea. Either way, for now, let's, uh, let's scoot back up here. And let's go to the castle district. I want to find out about my, uh, my birthright and some other things. But you know what? Actually, that's gonna, that's gonna have to wait for the next episode. I know this one was probably a little long, but I wanted to go a little bit further in, you know, fight some stuff, talk to some characters, gather my party before venturing forth, and I have, I'm in fourth-fifths of the way there, and I'm sure there's got to be more party members than this. Um... So a couple of talking points before we go. Uh, main features for this game. So it has a huge world map with two different countries. Is Ismerald, Ismerald and the Northern Realm. There are tons of districts, settlements, and villages. Uh, and everything's in the isometric perspective, obviously. There are five playable races. Human, Dwarf, Elf, Feldegog, and Rillo. Um, one of them's like... Kind of a Frost Elf looking race. And then... Uh, I believe the Rillo are kind of elephant people, which is neat. And then there's 13 different classes from four archetypes. Priest, Outlaw, Warrior, and Wizard. Uh, which is usually just like two of each, give or take. Uh, there's 300,000 words of handcrafted narrative. Uh, traditional real-time tactical combat with Boz. We saw a little bit of that. Mostly it was just go fight them. Uh, and that's usually yes. what I do. Though, what? characters actually do have special abilities, which is kind of nice. Because uh, that means that there's a little bit more that you can do with your fighter dudes. I'm as opposed listening. to just kind of, you know, chucking them at the enemy like I used to do in Baldur's Gate. It was fun, but it was not exactly the deepest. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Tons of different spells to wield and crafting to undertake. I haven't really messed with those. I'm really interesting. I, I'm really well, interested in seeing yes, like where that yes. goes when we get there. But unfortunately, uh, you got to get a lot, a lot of levels under your belt before you can really mess around with that. Uh, let's see. Also, this game has uh, the greed system, which I highlighted a little bit. But the decisions you make do affect the overall greed tendency of the world. And that seems like it might actually have some really interesting swing. All of the marketing for this game has, uh, you know, the characters. Uh, if you look at it, it's like a character that's like looking all kindly. And another one where he's got like green glowing fire coming out of his eyes and he looks like really sinister. And that's like probably maximum greed. And I'm really curious about what the differences are. But me being a goody two-shoes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm a bit of a greedy goody two-shoes where I steal everything that isn't nailed down as long as I'm not penalty penalized for it. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it works in this game. I, I'm not that way in real life. I should probably clarify a little bit. And also it's decently voice acted. It's not what? fully, fully voice acted from what I can tell. But like 90% of the options are there. Hey, and there's the Hall of Records, which we will investigate next time. So, I, uh, a couple of things before we go. Thank you once again to Grey Potion and Vicarious uh, Publishing for sponsoring this video. Uh, and I guess the next one as well. We will be back on Friday for another episode of this. We'll get a little bit deeper into the mystery and then I might skip ahead a bunch and see what's like way further out in the wilderness. Uh, just, you know, just to see what some higher level play looks like. But for now, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, Rad new indie games every single day. Hit subscribe because I got tons of them to check out, including more of this. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.